Hey everyone, uh, I hope you're getting lots of games in because it's still Double Glory Weekend, or maybe just end it when you're listening to this, but we got Triple Glory Weekend coming up, so I've been playing a ton, you know, leveling accounts, you know, I've been working on this new account, I'm going to do a stream where we go from not bad to SA, POA, see how many games it takes, just give my advice for carrying through the different tiers, got that account to level 10, I got to work on the karma, that seems to be the most difficult part, getting level 10 karma. Like, how do you get people to, uh, you know, give you that little thumbs up? Uh, but it's been a fun week. Uh, solo queue ranked, you know, that's been a little tricky lately. Been up and down, dropped out of Pinnacle of Awesome, back in, dropped out. Uh, rough life in that solo queue, I'm sure you all know. But on this episode, I got vain shame. We're going to talk about the news and maybe some ways that Glory and Super Evil can make the interface of the game even better uh, and more clear for everyone. So let's jump into this week's episode. Shatter the Vein, a podcast about vain glory. This is the 37th episode of Shatter the Vein. My name is Brad Chmielewski, and this is a podcast all about vain glory. Every week, I try to break down the news, gameplay, game tips, and hopefully we can all become better players together. This week, I have a new special guest on. I got Vain Shame on. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks, Brad. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Yeah, for people that don't know who you are, I'm sure streamers know. We're on Twitch right now broadcasting this, but streamers probably know who you are now from the, all the overlays, but you want to give an introduction to yourself, who you are. Uh, why should people even know who you are? <laughs> sure. Uh, well, I don't know if people should know who I am, but uh, yeah, my name's, I play go by the game name uh, Vain Shame. My name's Josh, and uh, I do a lot of graphic design in the community, um, put out overlays, wallpapers. I have a website, vainshame.com. Uh, also very active on Twitter. Um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Just a, a lot of graphics. I do a lot of stuff for VGL. Um, okay. Stuff like that. What uh, what brought you to uh, Fing Glory? Like, uh, why why did you start playing it, and then why did you decide to start making graphics for it? Sure, um, I started playing first week of December, so shortly after the release, um, and I was on vacation and uh, hanging out with some friends, and we just started getting into it. Loved the game. Started digging into the community on the forums and stuff, and yeah. realized. Uh, everything was kind of spread out. I, it was hard to, you know, forums felt a little antiquated to me. So right. I kind of hopped on Twitter, saw there was a huge community on Twitter, started digging into that and was like, you know, maybe I could build a community portal where everyone could come together and kind of uh, consolidate all of this information in one place. Okay. Um, and as I kept to playing the game, you know, I just realized I love it so much seeing the... Uh, the developers get involved with the community. You know, I mean, it's it's an amazing experience the way I see it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never been involved with a community that's had such close ties to the developers. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that just continued to drive me and inspire me. And uh, before I knew it, you know, I was building a website <laughs> and put overlays and, you know, hanging out on streams and just everywhere I could be to, to kind of consume vainglory, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you so you all these graphics are great that you put out do you, do you do Thanks. graphic design for a living like what's uh are you doing video game stuff or is it less no, interesting <laughs> so my background is uh graphic design illustration photography pretty much anything creative i got my hands in um but i also uh as my full-time job i'm a creative director and a marketing manager so uh when i'm not you know doing vainglory stuff i'm I'm doing looking at other people's work, kind of critiquing and making sure stuff's on brand and okay. <laughs> market properly. So uh, that's my uh, on on brand. Huh? It's such <laughs> an awful. <laughs> uh, do you have interest to get into the video game world? Is that uh, do you? Uh, is that something you're driving towards with all this, or just? Kind I of mean, fun? you know, if that happened, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been playing video games since as long as I can remember. Uh, love gaming, would love to be involved with gaming. You know, I'm not going to hold my breath that that's ever going to happen. But, um, yeah, I mean, the 
the motivation and inspiration I get from Vainglory, if I could do that day to day, you know, and have that, that drive to create off of something I love so much, uh, that would be amazing. I don't get that drive, that drive in my day to day job. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes the, the passion, it's fun when it's on the outside, but sometimes when it becomes the actual job too, it's like, Oh now it's a job. I don't know. <laughs> it's a... uh, right. <laughs> so you never know if that could happen. Uh, but since you do design, I do design work. I kind of wanted to talk about the game itself and how it looks and just functions a little bit. Uh, other people that have been on the show, they've been streamers and uh, other people in the community that just play the game. But to have you on, besides uh, Kraken that was on a few episodes ago, just to talk about like the look of the game, if you, ever wanted, sure. if you wanted to jump into that. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a beautiful game. I, you know, I don't know what I can say about it that it's lacking because, you know, everything I look at in that game, it just blows me away. Uh, everything from, you know, the lore that they're putting on the website mm -hmm. and the, the custom illustrations to uh, the hero il illustrations in the game and the graphics itself. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. You know, I've been playing some other games this week uh, on mobile, and as I look at those, <laughs> I'm just like, you know, they're, they're totally missing this opportunity that Vainglory... You know, when you load up Vainglory, you're mm -hmm. just kind of blown away by uh, whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out. It, it is just beautiful. Yeah, I think you know? that's what gets a lot of people into the game right away. I know that's what did for me at the Apple event. It's like, oh my god, this is running on a tablet. This looks fantastic, and like the 3D rendering, it's just like amazing. It's nuts. Absolutely, <laughs> Absolutely. yeah. It, it's crazy that they built that all from the ground up, but uh, I mean, it's. It's a beautiful game. I can't wait to see when they start to introduce more cameras and stuff because it's there's a lot to look at and and it's really put together well. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of people like talk about uh, like it being a mobile game and like how to monetize all this and like better ways to do it like buying heroes and the character select screen. And I'm wondering if you see that as like a something they need or are we thinking about it in the wrong way? Like should we stop thinking about Vanglory as like a mobile MOBA and it's just a it's a great game that happens to be played on a mobile device. Right. I, I think that's what they're hoping is that people <laughs> pass the mobile and, and it's more of how you're interacting with the game, uh, less about the quality of the game, but more of it, the interaction. Um, I think you, you put, tweeted a, a uh, link this week about, you know, a lot of people in the industry talking about the game as a whole and mm -hmm. MOBAs on mobile and, uh, you know, I truly think, I mean, part of the reason I'm in this community is because I think it is a future. I don't think there's any limitation to to this game just because it's a mobile game, you know? It's, right. it's fantastic. The gameplay's there. Um, I, you gotta, I think people just got to get past the fact that it's a mobile device running it. Yeah, for sure. And I think that it opens up so many more people to play the game because you don't need a PC, you don't need a high-end computer to be doing these graphics. It's like... Uh, it's on like a you know two hundred dollar tablet for some people, and you just yeah. jump into yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I never you know I always looked at League of Legends and Dota as games I wanted to play, uh, but I didn't really have a PC to do that. I was on a laptop, and it's just you know it's funky to try to play those on a laptop. So um, being able to pull a Vainglory on my on my iPad and just you know kick around a couple games in an hour, it's it's terrific. You know, it got me in there. I, you know, I got my son into it. It's yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, as far as like the UI and user interface goes, like how do you feel all that functions for you? Do you have any issues? Like I think I'm worried. Like as we get more skins in the future, we're gonna have to have a better way to pick skins. Right. Yeah, I was just looking at it earlier. Uh, you know, like tier three Kashka, you gotta gotta scroll to see the skin down there, the picket. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely as we get more skins. Um, but I think that's something I have confidence that Super Evil is going to definitely focus on, just like we saw with the uh, profile pages where they started to get really loaded up with crap, and then they broke it into three tabs, um, just kind of reiterating the design as they go through it. Uh -huh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of buttons in the game sometimes, and it does get confusing, but as you add more content and ways to access stuff, you need to figure all that out. Like, right, um, I yeah. I think they said Absolutely. something on the list was uh, uh, like your what your previous matches, like what happened in like win loss kind of screen, and that adds like another screen into this game. And it's like, <laughs> oh man, we got we got a lot of buttons going on here. It's like right, right. it maybe loses 
with a game with so much depth, I mean, you're you're bound to be, you know, facing a lot of content choices. So, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's something people are going to be happy with, regardless. The the more stats and stuff they can provide us, I think people will deal with the you know menus and dropping down into different pages. Right, as long as they make it that easy to use. Sometimes it's sure. easier on a computer where you can just quickly you have so much space to click on a screen and right click right. and do all that stuff. Right. So, uh, but I'm excited what they do with the game. I think my biggest complaint right now is we need a better way to tell casual and rank you like when that happens and knowing that you're into that. Cause as a, if you're invited to a party, someone could just be like, yep, we're going into casual. Oh, sure. And then really they go into rank. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I haven't experienced that, but yeah, that, that definitely could be an issue for sure. Uh-huh. I don't think anyone's uh, done that. Usually people who invite you to parties are usually your friends. Right. They're kind of like, they're not going to try to trick you on that. But <laughs> right. Just, just to know you hit the right button is, uh, would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, what they did with the, the big buttons and the, the update for the activatables, uh, I think that's just a good instance, uh, a good example of them looking at the problem and then coming up with a solution to kind of help clean up the interface uh, mm-hmm. throughout the did, game. So, Did you go in and increase your button size? Did Absolutely. you change that? Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I, d- I didn't do it. Oh, no. I was like, oh, I was like, oh I'm kind of used to this way, so I think it's fine. Yeah, you know, I mean, it took, it took a couple days to get used to having to look at the score to see my build all the time. But, right. but overall, I like it a lot better because I was having a lot of issues prior to that update, if that was 1.4 or whatever, uh, missing the button. So I think it's a nice change. Quality yeah, of life, right? <laughs> maybe they'll add a way for you to move stuff around because if i could know like oh potions are the first thing you click on the left side yeah. like that would be nice that would sometimes be it's like oh i hit my boots and my re-. sometimes right. it's just like you're pressing buttons so fast it's like yeah. oh, everything <laughs> sure yeah i mean that would be that muscle memory that then you're you know you can just start people would be getting even better once they can memorize where to hit <laughs> awesome uh one more thing on the design as we get more characters into the character select screen, like we're kind of scrolling, like do you think we'll need like a search function in there? Like I don't know if you ever played uh, League of Legends at all, but you can search like Marksman or the hero's name and kind of get sure. a quickly selection of those. Yeah, I didn't play League of Legends, but I could see that being an issue. Um, you know, I think someone mentioned that they were saying that at some point maybe the game would have 100 heroes um, or, or, you know, a preposterous number that's hard to imagine at this moment but uh yeah i mean i think i'd rather see search in the friends list first but yeah i think that should be oh, that something you'll need uh, yeah that would that would be pretty nice too yeah scrolling to your w's of your friends right kind of like oh man or for you for vain shame like <laughs> you have to forget the bottom <laughs> oh that's awesome i'm excited as they you know get feedback from people and realize like oh yeah we could just make stuff more clear what they add and improve on the game because they've said in the past like you might see a hero or a skin and it's gonna keep changing and it keeps getting better and you know as the tablets get even even more power they can kind of increase the look and right. polygons and everything in the game right <laughs> so that's fun yeah uh, should we jump into the news then sure Vain Glory News. So it's another super light week. Uh, we're getting like a little teases for 1.7 here and there. Uh, but yeah, we only got a, a couple things. I think the big one that happened right after I put out last week's episode was Sky. We got the little teaser for Sky. Yeah. Uh, this was a 3D rendering of the character. Uh, no animation yet. Just like strictly like glorified 3d like what, what you, i think everybody does when they make 3d images they just kind of do the <laughs> camera pan around and be like look at how awesome this looks uh what do you what do you think of this character i uh, i think sky looks pretty awesome um i'm excited you know the the dual machine guns um i forget who was saying that you know that she'll be protected from the front but not the back potentially and that i think there's a lot of cool options uh, I just can't wait to see some actual animation or or some ideas between behind what her abilities are going to be. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a cool character. I'm excited. 
Yeah, do you think uh, any predictions? I know she's going to have some sort of machine guns. Like, she's got right. some sort of guns there. And do you think she's going to have a jump like Jewel, or is she going to have, like, a, a super dash? Yeah, I was thinking, like, a uh, like a kind of a super dash where it's, a, like, a two-step kind of hop type deal, you know? Um, a gap closer that's maybe a two-jump. But I, I, who knows? You know, I could just see that being a really cool kind of... I don't want to say prance, but, <laughs> you know, some, some kind of cool hop. Uh, yeah, I think uh, when before Jewel got some tweaks and she's, like, pretty solid now, uh, Kima on the forums made a suggestion to have, like, instead of a jump, it was a, a skill shot uh, charge that would oh, hit shit. them and, like, kind of knock up everyone or maybe even stun them. Right. So, so yeah, that, I, I think that would be cool. That, and that's kind of what I was thinking. If it's, like, a maybe a, you do a double tap skill shot jump where it, you can jump one direction and then change directions in the middle of the jump. It'd be kind of cool. That'd be neat, yeah. Uh, she kind of looks a little like Jewel. I think everyone's like, oh, she looks too similar and all this stuff. And someone was saying, like, I think it might have been on the Undersprawl, they were saying, like, what if she is the person who's chasing after Jewel? Like, do you think she's from that same world? Yeah, I, that- I think that speculation on the Undersprawl was spot on that uh, – I forget who was saying it, DZ or someone saying that maybe that's the person chasing Jewel for stealing the the robot suit or the mech. Uh, I think that's. I mean, it seems seems fairly accurate based off of the the artwork. Right. Yeah. Uh, but she has like a storm. So she has like a storm guard or l- lieutenant kind of look. Right. So maybe if they start to tie in the the storm guard and the mech world and right. all this stuff, kind of starts to piece together and we get like a bigger story i think that could be yeah i think it's cool i think it'd be cool uh much like arden and the family that if there's more of these interweaving stories i think that's a a great thing to add yeah i you know what i don't think though she's gonna be in 1.7 i think this might be one of those patches without a hero yeah i that would be uh it's been a long time since we had a patch without a hero it hasn't it i mean um, yeah, it was one point four. Right, right before the the family, I think oh, yeah. we got that patch. Yeah, and that was or it came or out in like right January. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah, a little later, yeah, a little later that's February. Like that. That's, that's all <laughs> uh, but it just seemed like the way they were talking, Sky wasn't like she's going to be in a future update was kind of what they said. So you know, might not even be in one point eight. Maybe we'll get someone before Sky. Yeah, that's crazy. It's just weird that they teased her at this the world's invitational event and was like, Oh, we made this character because Korean players love like high skill cap characters. Right. And like what what about this character over maybe someone else in their pipeline? Like it's like, Yeah, you guys, this one's for you. Right, right. And yeah, maybe they're figuring that out. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, check it out, this is gonna be sweet and uh, we'll get back to you on what, what she actually does. What she does, yeah. What do you what do you guys want it to do? Yeah. <laughs> Once we figure out what the, the Koreans actually want. Uh-huh. Uh, do you think they had to rush this out? Like, uh, we kind of got a t- leaked photo of it. It definitely, like, it definitely felt like it was a rushed announcement. Um, kind of like we're going to throw them a, a carrot. And then uh, as it showed up on Twitter, it was like, okay, we're now we got to really share a little mm-hmm. information. I mean, for what it's worth, I, I think it's great. Hopefully it's not too early for them to show it, that it's going right. to change substantially. But it was... I mean, I think it's nice to see what they're even thinking about, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, the only reason I think, feel like it was rushed was because the animation title, even like the NA1, didn't have an English kind of branded thing. Right. And I feel like if they would have been prepared for it, they might have re-rendered that title card. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but fun, and I'm sure we'll start to get more stuff teased as we get closer to her official release. Uh, one of the other things that was previewed that's going to be in 1.6 is the Taka skin. Uh, we got the preview image, like the concept artwork, like what was this, like two weeks ago? Yeah. And now we actually have some in-game footage and an image of this. Um, the skin looks pretty solid. Think- like there's nothing, uh, it's, it's good. It's not like, oh my God, amazing. But it's like, ah, I like that. It has a cool look. Right, but you got the baby fox to really make it amazing. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was kind of like they kept doing the the loop on the baby fox sneezing. I think that's the that's the awesome factor right there. You know? That's the key. That's the selling right. point for people. Yeah. <laughs> they, they kinda, I I was reading the interview um, 
on their website about the skin and they were saying you know they they had a direction they were going and then the customer base wanted or the gamers wanted a uh more of a heroic skin for taka and so they went this direction so you know i think the player base kind of pushed their hand and then they they threw in the baby fox to make it stupid cuter and yeah (laughs) well maybe i wonder if they were going like a evil dark taka way and like taka uh, as a character feels like already shady and maybe they didn't want that to come across and be like oh you taka's just evil and mean and invisible all the time right. overpowered <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean i would have loved to see him get a little more evil but you know if that's the direction they want to go maybe in the future they did say the tier two and the tier three would be kind of deviating from that first tier one so i guess oh, there's some okay. potential hmm. um i think the box is really fun that he's like just puts on this basket yeah, it's great then oh, that's cool yeah, that, i thought that was a nice change <laughs> Are you a Taka player? Is I don't play Taka at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> I play Kashka. I've never been able to figure out Taka for some reason. Okay. Yeah, I've been playing a little more uh, Taka just uh, because he's so strong sure. right now. It's like, oh, I can play a pretty solid Kashka. It's like, well, same right, idea, right? right? <laughs> That's what I thought. For some reason, I just can't wrap my head around uh, getting him to perform properly. But if he was a free hero, I'd be using him. Okay, yeah, those stacks are probably the trickiest thing right. to like understand, and you're having to watch the stacks now, the map, and like your positioning, right. and it's like, oh, oh well, man, it's kind of a, a lot to think about. I feel like he's a very high skill cap yeah. character. It's cool. Um, the other skin we got previewed for was the Catherine Tier 2 skin. Um, I got Tier 1. That one's great. And this one's just like, oh, man, the detail and the, her... Uh, shield and everything is just it's fantastic yeah i actually as soon as they revealed that i went about the tier one just on red yeah because i I think that looks great just that shield in general is it's just uh it's it looks great Mm -hmm. they didn't show off any in-game stuff for her yet for the two oh yeah oh man i I missed that i'll have to go back and watch i like caught caught a bit of that but i didn't see the in-game so it is and somehow you know i've been meaning to go back and just look at her base skin uh, because the tier two, the end game, I mean, the sword that comes out of the shield, everything just looked, it looks bigger and brighter and shinier. It just looks really good. Yeah, I mean, and the, I can't wait for that detail to come for tier three then. Like, just knowing, like, the progression of these skins, like, when you get one, and then the next one is, like, even better, and just knowing, like, what we've seen in Ringo and Kashka and Adagio with the particles yeah. and stuff is, like, Man, what's she, what what's Catherine's bubble gonna look right. like in tier three? Yeah, tier three is gonna be awesome. I, you know, I think they're gonna go Storm Queen with her, but it, it'll be interesting to see. I can't I can't wait. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and then the last bit of news is the world's invitational streaming dates. We finally <laughs> got these. So these matches took place. Uh, was it earlier in the week or late yeah. last week? I forget the actual days that it happened. And we kind of got some stuff leaked on the internet. If you looked around, you probably know who's in the finals, and you might know <laughs> who won. Uh, but if you want to be surprised, you may have been able to avoid those because they were just kind of tweets from maybe uh, not credible sources. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but these dates are going to be, first one's going to be Monday at 3.30 Pacific time. A.M., yeah. A.M. This is A.M. Uh, and then Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Um, they're so early because they're being aired in Korea first, and they're being broadcast on there, uh, as well as streamed live on a couple different channels. So, uh, And then it seems like these are going to happen for, th- must be happening for three weeks. Okay. So we get these first matches Monday, Thursday, uh, what was it? all the different teams and then maybe another one the following week and then so we got three weeks before we get to see the finals probably yeah that's crazy i wish i wish the times were better but you know i mean if it's it's for korean audience and they're i Mm -hmm. i think that playoff beard said that they're kind of creating the story arc that's going to go throughout the episodes to to build the drama so it'll be fun to see i wish they were (laughs) i just wish i could watch them there's no way i'm going to stay up (laughs) to watch 
you're not you're not gonna stay up. You're not gonna get up early because that's what uh, uh five thirty a.m. Yeah, like that's our right. time. Yeah, central probably. time. <laughs> right. so, uh, maybe I'll just, you just you know get up for the <laughs> <laughs> just to, right. at least for the finals. Maybe not that first round, right? <laughs> uh, well, any predictions? Like, did you do you already know who's? I think I know who won, win, but I like, you know like, I'm trying not to. I haven't heard it official, so I. You know, I don't know. You know, okay. obviously, I'm going for USA. Uh, I, I'd love to see right. see one of our teams win, um, but I don't know. I'm excited. I can't wait wait to see it all played out on the big stage and uh, the production values coming together and, and all the graphics and animation. I, I mean, it's going to be it's that step forward that that we really need. Uh, yeah, it seemed like the images that were shared uh, from Van Glory and a few other people that were there. Uh, there's a great write up on the Gangstars blog, if anyone wants to go there. Uh, but just the the stage they put together and then the chairs with the tablets they have set up. Um, it looked like they set it up for like iPads, but it looked like everyone right. could bring their own stuff because I, I felt like I saw some. Yeah, video I did see someone on the iPhone because yeah, you can't. If you're so used to playing on one device, you can't show up and be like, here, you right. have to play on this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I can't wait to see how everyone like uh, plays together and against each other, like what like, what they pull out just to maybe yeah. throw off. Yeah, I th they said that there, there was upsets and surprises, and uh, I forget who said, you know, it basically came down to who made the biggest mistake that got capitalized on, so... Uh, it's going to be fun to see, you know, no lag and just uh, straight up head to head. It's going to be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because these are the first time. These are like the best teams in the world currently. Yeah. They're the best players, really. Uh, and just what they're bringing to out and what they can deliver is kind of nuts. <laughs> should, be, should be some good <laughs> learning experience for anyone that wants to improve in the game. And so get ready for those. I'm sure the VODs will go up shortly after. Yeah. Everyone will be sharing them. Bangalore will probably post them and be talking about them on their live streams on Wednesday and Friday, so keep a lookout. And then one more bit of news. I'll throw this in the show notes still. I forgot to, but it's the free hero rotation. Uh, every week I just like to mention it, and we f the big time reason I want to mention it this time is because we got Fortress yeah, in that's this awesome. week's. <laughs> so this week included Fortress, Jewel, Adagio, Celeste, Kashka, and Ringo. This is a great lineup. If you're a new player, or if you're just if you only have the free heroes, like this is a this is a pretty fun. Yeah, group. yeah, and I've been happy to see some uh, in solo queue seeing some fortress out there, just because you you can't really go wrong if that if you're running jungle and you got a fortress support other than you know the one that's just going all attack, uh, but. <laughs> It's it's nice to have that that person in there giving you kind of the warhorn effect and mixing up the game a little bit mm -hmm. in the solo queue. I don't always have to play support. Okay, well, yeah, I was gonna ask what role do you usually play? Like, are you like you said you play Kashka? Well, you yeah, I you know if I have my okay. choice, I'll play Kashka. But um, I've kind of taken on I'll play whatever role is needed. So I, I'm really proficient at Celeste or okay. Kashka. Arden, Fortress, I'll play whatever. I don't mind playing support because I think it's kind of fun okay. to to protect everybody as much as I can. But uh, I'd rather be out there being an assassin yeah, if I yeah. can. Yeah, and but Fortress, yeah, he's so strong with that mortal wounds. It's just like, man, when he jumps oh. in there, you're bleeding, and you're like, even when you're on the opposite end of that, you're like, ah, you know what? Right. I don't know <laughs> if I'm gonna die. I'm like this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. One more tick? Uh, all right, thank God. <laughs> but so if you haven't picked up Fortress, uh, go play him for free. You know he's the latest hero, so he's the most expensive. Uh, definitely give him a try and see if you like that aggressive support play style, because everyone else plays this like protector support. Uh, so being uh, someone that just goes in there and starts the action is kind yeah. of a, a new thing, I think, and maybe maybe even more fun than being the guy that's just like. Hold on, let me shield you and you know. Yeah, save absolutely. You. I, well, I dig them because you're <laughs> you're kind of setting up the ganks and uh, you know giving everyone the setting the target. I like that you can call the targets, you know, with your bleed. So um, mm -hmm. 
I love them for that. Just be very aggressive, and everyone can kind of. It helps focus everyone, especially in solo queue, on on who they should be hitting. Mm-hmm. So it's. Yeah, because that's the hardest. Sometimes people just don't know. Like, right. uh, who who are we trying to attack now? It's like, right. This guy is marked. Right. He's bleeding to death. Get, Get that dude right now. <laughs> Uh, that's that's great. Uh, I know. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of them on this uh, new account. I've been leveling up, so it's just like if I gotta go support. I only have him and yeah. Catherine, so I'm gonna play Fortress. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, that's all the news that I think I saw this week. I'm sure, knowing Super Evil, they will put something out on Monday right. <laughs> just to mess with me. Uh, but you want to jump into some form static? On the forums and Reddit, and even this great article that Keldegar put together on Broken Myth, it's about rank queue issues. Mm-hmm. And I think I even tweeted about this last night. But the general thought is, yeah. it's messed up. Like you, so in rank queue, you have to be level ten. You have to have ten le- level ten karma, and then you cannot queue with someone outside of one whole skill tier away. So if you're simply amazing bronze you can queue with hotness bronze and poa bronze that's like your limit so anyone in there which makes sense like they don't want people like elo boosting their accounts uh they want you to have fair matches like with the same amount of people but if you go into solo queue you can get matched with uh you know a pretty good bronze or uh, ask again right. later person it's like there's no rhyme or reason to that uh that matching in there yeah it absolutely and it does sucks sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh for the most part i was having like great games like the last two weeks and then for whatever reason this week i don't know if they made some sort of tweak to it but i was starting to get this or maybe i was playing at off hours you know staying up way too late and like nobody in my skill tier is on but man when you would add someone at the end of the game you're like you know Let's just right. see where you were, because there's no way you're the same as me. Yeah. It's like, oh, that sucks. And then you realize, like, oh, I lost a whole bunch of ELO because we went against, like, really low people because <laughs> I got ELO yeah. my team. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing uh, with my son. He's getting into Vainglory, and uh, he's he was just in, he actually oh. just hit decent-ish last night, and he was running around the house so stoked about it. Um, but we're going in. I'm playing on a Smurf with him, hoping to get up matched up with not bad players. And you know, you see people coming in that are hotness mm-hmm. or something, and he's just getting stutter stepped all over. And it's just sad, you know. He he's so upset. Like, how are these people so much better than me? And I'm just playing. You know, I should be playing against people my skill tier. So it's it's really broken. It's it's a little a little bit of a shame. But at least it's you know it's not for the rank you know as much right yeah um in uh, surprise birthday was interviewed by kelder on the broken myth article and there's a link in the show notes uh but usually their answer is right. always uh we're right. tweaking it or we're looking at it like this is <laughs> this seems to be the super evil default answer uh which makes sense like i understand like they need to like maybe adjust the code this day and just see what happens uh, really, we don't have that many people playing, and if you think about it, half the people are now playing one mode, right. and half the people are now playing the other mode. Uh, so if you are playing at like an off time, or maybe the time that you can play, you may not get a yeah. great match. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was right funny, now. you know, we, we all wanted ranked Q, and then we get it, a ranked and a casual, and then we get it, and everyone's kind of like, oh man, maybe the solo queue wasn't too bad. I mean, you know, it, it sucked before, but maybe it wasn't too bad before. You know, we were still having the same situation. Uh, it, it's funny. You know, I mean, and, you know, what can they do? We've yeah. we've all asked for a, a better rank system, and they're trying to implement it, yeah. and they're learning as they go. So, uh, you know, it's going to get better. I have faith they're going to make it better, so... Yeah, I think the best way to play rank queue right now is party up. Like, you go add three people on your team that you know same skill tier as you within that one percent or one skill tier right and you're gonna have a much better game uh you may go against like uh 
you know, the trio queue of Lost Boy Tough or Fuji because you guys are a trio and they're a trio, but overall you will usually end up with a better match. And you have people that you can trust on your team that you probably play Absolutely. with regularly. Uh, but have you been playing... So you play more rank queue or casual queue? You so, well, like, uh, you been playing? unfortunately on my Smurf, I'm not high enough level to play ranked with him. And he's level 14. I'm still like eight okay. or something. So I'm trying, we're playing a lot of casual queue. And then on my, <laughs> you know, on my main fame shame account, I've been playing kind of a mixture. I've played about eight or 10 uh, ranked games. And uh, everyone was, com- I've seen everyone complaining about ranked. And then I was having a great time. And then my last six games have just sucked. So I've stopped playing. Uh, I've stopped playing ranked altogether. Oh, yeah. Just stick to casual <laughs> for a while. I, yeah, you know, I bounce back and forth. I, I feel like if I'm going to play, I, I want to play ranked. It's like, oh, I feel like I want to get something out of it. So <laughs> I, go, I go into it. <laughs> uh, but it's fun going to a casual queue and trying all these different heroes that you can just, uh, right. you know, screw around with. Like, let's see what Yeah, what Yeah, I mean, I've wanted to learn Glaive for a long time, um, but I never wanted to take him in the solo queue. And I didn't ever really do much smurfing, so I would, I never played him. But now with casual Q, I've played him quite a bit, and I'm having fun with him. So, I, I mean, it's definitely a great, great addition. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, we got a question in the Twitch chats, and it's about our topic. So I was wondering, do you think we should they should increase that tier or the loading time or the match time so you get a better match? Like, would you would you rather wait longer and have a better match or just get into the game? I, you like, know, I, I think ranked or casual queue. waiting the extra time to get into a better match while it sucks is, is kind of what we were asking for. You know, in solo queue, they were limiting it to 257 or whatever, and then you were getting whatever match you could get, and that wasn't much of a solution as it was. So um, I think trying to mm-hmm. make it so it's faster and you get less of a good match is just kind of taking us back to where we were. Right. I think right now, uh, surprise birthday said that a uh, nine minute right. and 50 second is the new two fifty seven. So if you hit almost 10 yeah. minutes, they will just match you. But you see people in league, uh, like streamers during the day that challenger queue people, if they miss their queue, like the game that's happening with those 10 people, yeah, like sure. they have to wait till the next one happens. Yeah, that's so nice. that's 30, 45 minutes they end up waiting. Uh, so is that, do we need that? Uh, I don't know. I feel like it comes back to what we said sure. at the beginning. Like this is a mobile game. And so am I just going to like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've had some cues that, that are you know, four or five minutes and I, I don't get to play enough. Or I don't have enough time to play that that works for me. I usually will quit out um, if I can because I can't I can't spare the time to sit around waiting for a game. You know, I, I've got too much other things to do. I got maybe yeah. <laughs> an hour to play some matches. So um, it really is. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a tough balance, and you know, I think once we have more people and with the Android people coming in as they they level up, it. It takes a while. It takes about 60 games to get to level 10, and that's right. not even including the karma that you have to get. So uh, once they've reached that level, like maybe rank Q will get a little better, yeah. and we'll start to have more people. Uh, but, yeah, anything else about the Q system or any issues you've been seeing uh, people you know, have? I, I like mean, trolling we've been playing this like game that. enough for long enough that it, it feels about the same. It's always been. It just, I think... With 1.6, there was an expectation that it was all going to be magically solved and, and be a lot better, and it's, it's still a work in progress. Yeah. So uh, the game's still fun. New heroes, uh, it's great, you know. I mean, right. we'll get there. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not the super competitive guy, mm-hmm. so uh, I'm not vainglorious. I'm in hotness, so, you know, I, I'm just dealing with everyday okay. trolls and having fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think either one of us are gonna. We're not trying to be professional gamers. Uh, you know, we have other things <laughs> to do, uh, but we have fun with the game, and that's really what it all comes down to at the end right. of the day. Like, did you have fun at the game? And you know, hopefully, uh, it was fair match, and you know, you got to play for yep. twenty minutes, and you know, move on. Well, that'll do it for episode thirty-seven. Vain shame. Thanks for. 
jumping on with me, chatting about the game. Uh, again, we mentioned this at the beginning, but where can people find you? Get Absolutely. Touch, Thanks for website, having me, Brad. Twitter, um, all that good stuff. Name's Vane Shame. You can find me at vaneshame.com. I got a website with uh, Twitch overlays, uh, desktop wallpapers, mobile wallpapers. You can also find me on Twitter at Vane Shame. Um, on Twitch at Vane Shame. I got a Vane Shame Discord now, which I'm I'm trying to promote. That is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm all over the place. Just look for Vane Shame. Cool. I, I know someone asked me this, so I better ask you before we get yes. out of here. Where did Vane <laughs> so, Shame come So, you know, from? in uh, <laughs> at the beginning of January, when I was deciding to make this website, um, I was like, I'm going to need a name, a domain name. And I started kind of playing around with some some ideas. And then it was this uh, kind of internal shame that I'm so addicted to this game. And, uh, you know, my family's like, all you do is play the game. All you do is talk about Vainglory. Um, so I was like, fine, vain shame. It kind of rhymes. It's easy to remember. I'm going to go with that. Awesome. That's, right. that's a good story. I'm sure people like to know. <laughs> Uh, and so if you want to follow Shadow of the Vein too, all the episodes get posted on the website, shadowthevein.com, and Twitter account, uh, at Shadow of the Vein, Facebook page, backslash Shadow of the Vein, uh, sharing images there, uh, news stories, lots of good stuff. Uh, the Twitter is usually my ramblings that are often misspelled, so <laughs> some tweeting in between games. And then I'm streaming on here every Sunday with the episodes, and then... My Twitch account is backslash Brad Chmielewski. And so if you want to head over there and you know watch some fun games. Uh, but that'll do it for episode 36. Thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out. And have a great week. 